Um, insert obligatory YouTube title here, I guess. Huh? Yeah, seems to work. Greetings fellow Vita fans, this is James with PS Vita at 2am, coming at you once again with another exciting video. And if you're new here and love everything PlayStation Vita, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, as you can all tell, I didn't really know exactly what to name this video. There were some games that popped into my mind recently that I wanted to discuss with you guys, but they didn't really have any kind of correlating theme to one another, so I'm just going to be calling the video this. And in hindsight, I may have just made a future topic segment for the channel. Hmm, maybe it's not so bad after all. Either that or I have no clue what I'm doing. And normally this is the part of the video where I would ask you all, hey, which games in insert category here do you like? the most but since we don't actually have a category for this video um, I guess just go ahead and type something down in the comment section I'll reply back to it so welcome welcome one and all to games that James just wants to talk about might be a placeholder title but it's probably more than likely gonna be the real deal okay here's the first one this is Sayonara Umihara Kawase plus and I'm probably gonna be saying the title to this one in various different ways because I don't really know how to say it but this is in fact our platformer game for this video Huh, guess that wasn't too terrible of an introduction. And this game is hereby dedicated to all the seafood lovers out there. What do I mean by that? Well, this is what I mean. Umihara Kawase is a girl who uses a fishing hook as a grappling hook. You'll need quick reflexes to swing your way through the branching, surreal environments. Use your brains to figure out the best way through. They say fish is brain food. You're gonna need it. And with me, I'm probably gonna need a triple dose of that. Remember in the past how I mentioned that Gods of All My Gas kind of gave me this funky acid trip kind of feel to it? Well, this game might just put that one to shame, and that says a lot. Uh, although a room was probably a lot worse. The elasticity of Umihara's fishing line sets this game apart from other games, giving unpresented levels of mobility and discovery. Tightening the line or giving lots of slack can be the difference between success or failure. This elasticity can help you reach unreachable areas to be catapulted upwards. This game features physics-based puzzle platforming that challenges your reflexes and brain power. Extreme electricity fishing line physics gives you advanced controls, many stages with branching paths. Just want to give a small PSA here, you may want to not try this with an actual fishing rod in real life. Not that I personally have tried it or anything. Four playable characters, face giant, aquatic bosses like a tadpole, a seahorse, and more. See, I told you this game was trippy. And believe me when I say here, this may look like a cute, innocent looking puzzle platformer, but it's anything but. It really will test your reflexes and make you throw your Vita out the window too. Not that I personally have tried it or anything. And the next game I'm about to talk about that has nothing to do with the last is Summon Knight 6 Lost Borders. Yeah, we went from a puzzle platformer that may want to make you rage quit to a tactical RPG. I don't know how that happened either. But can't you just be glad that it did? Welcome to Cocoon World, where the three main characters, Raj, Amu, and East, live in virtual isolation until strangers start falling into their world, literally from the clear blue sky. You know, people falling out of the sky? 100% normal, that happens to me every day. Explore the world and fight your way through strategy RPG battles in a beautiful 3D widescreen battle system. Choose melee attacks, summons, party attacks, or two allies can team up for a breathtaking summon burst. An attack that unleashes devastating fantastical creatures on your foes. Then, after each chapter, take out for a night conversation to build affinity with your favorite characters. Mmm, can you say Persona style social links? How far can you go with said character? Eh, probably not very far, it's only rated T for mild suggested themes. The game has 18 hours of spoken dialogue in key events and 30 possible endings. Yeah, 30 possible endings. And I for one have unlocked one. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. The new Game Plus feature that you will get after beating the game will make you want to see everything that Bandai Namco's role-playing masterpiece has to offer. Now the reason why I wanted to bring your attention to this title is because I've always felt that Summon Knight 6 kind of is underrated on the PS Vita, especially in the realm of tactical RPGs. And being that this is actually the sixth game in the series, this game is part of a series. Hey, I had to throw in some kind of plot twist in the video. And if you love tactical RPGs and haven't had a chance to try it yet, what are you waiting for? This game is just begging to be played. And now to continue our crescendo theme of randomness with this video, we go from a puzzle platformer to a tactical RPG, now to a, um, um, 
it's, I don't even know what kind of genre this game is. It kind of plays like a cross between Pac-Man and Choo Choo Rocket. So whatever genres those two are in, this is Pix the cat. And I just want to say off the bat here, I always kind of thought that they should have spelled cat with a K in this title. I don't know why, it just seemed like it fit better with this theme. It emotionally bothers me that they didn't. Pix the Cat is a critically acclaimed intense arcade game that will challenge your reflexes and your wits, pitting you against your friends in the world in a race to the highest score. In Pix the Cat, you are Pix. Did they really feel the need to have to tell us that? The first cat in the world to play his own game. Well, uh, that... Okay. Progress in the grid of infinity, deeper and deeper through its nested levels. Hatch the eggs to stack up ducklings behind you. Drop them off at target circles to set them free. Avoid hitting walls and obstacles at all cost. Still with me? No, but okay, let's keep going. In arcade mode, you make your way through the flashy digital levels, pulsing to gravitating grooves that won't fail to make your heart skip a beat or two. With art that feels dug up from an old attic, the nostalgia mode is an adventure oozing with surprises. Each of the 70 levels offers a new skill challenge and yet another blister under your thumb. You know game, you may not want to boast about that fact. A lot of us out there don't like blistered thumbs. And no, I'm not talking about the company. In the laboratory, your results are measured by a number of moves. Keep them minimal while dodging dangers to collect the bonus stamps. And uh, well, eh, you guys get the idea by now and how it plays. Aside from the weird mechanic about bumping your head that makes you die, which I really, really don't like about this game, this title is pretty awesome. It's kooky, it's weird, and that's probably why I like it. And thus, this will conclude games that James just felt like talking about randomly. Oh look, I just changed the title again. Man, I just can't keep anything consistent with this video. But guys, let me know, um, uh, well, okay, here, I thought of something. Let me know which of these games you like the best. I think that's pretty much the only question I can ask at this point. And as always, fellow Vita fans, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It really means a lot to me. Love you all, and I'll see you next time. This video has been brought to you in part by all of these wonderfully generous people who help make this content possible, including Smug Wolf, Jesus Hernandez, Mazgas, Saki Balam, Kayonko, Burz and Mystery, Cobble Trapa, Azumara, Juan M. Hermesio, Eric DeWitt, Jackie, Tasha Monti, Donut Valley, Ronin Alganto, Romp King, Matt Hargett, Dr. Super Artie, Alan Iwazu, Bushin Ryu Cat, Milk Sama, Neo Rashi, Shin Snake, Joseph Raismick, Reiko Star, Matt Fox, Frayden, B Mystery, Zacredo, Makis Blob, Gooder Drums, Phantom XRS, BMF, Hero Acer, Hemdal Imbert, Saul Ramirez, Clayton Merlarkey, Adam Sondi, Kyle Brooks, Joshua Williams, PS Vita S, JR, Jared Hado, Richard Cruz, Erock, Kevin Enright, Lori Sweeney, Per Sterner, Heston Joseph, Jelly, Wendy K, Adam Thury, Aaron Swanson, Mario Cruz, David Ray, Sculpture Tugel TCG, Rodrigo Vera, and Larry Anderson. If you would be interested in supporting the channel and seeing your name on this end screener, or if you wish to remain anonymous that can be provided too, then make sure to check the links down in the description below. I have numerous ways for you to do this down there. Can't support in this manner? Don't worry about it. Likes and shares can help equally as much. And still, I can't stop thinking about the fact that Pix the Cat is not named with a K instead of a C. I don't know why this is causing me such emotional stress. Do you guys think I have a problem? Thank you.